Welcome to Intro to Java with an emphasis on AP Computer Science A. Today's topic is strings, and I am Tokyo EdTech. Let's take a look at what we're going to look at today. As I mentioned, strings. We're going to learn what is a string, and string is textual information. We're going to look at string concatenation, which is combining strings, and we've seen a little bit of this before in this series. We're going to look at five string methods. These are the five that the AP emphasizes, but there are plenty more. I'll show you a little bit about those as well. And the five are the length method, substring, index of, equals, and compare to. And just as an aside, I want to talk a little bit about objects and collections. This is the first time we're seeing these uh, for the most part, um, but they are important concepts that you will see throughout this course. So let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, a string uh, is a, basically it's a data type and it is textual information. Previously, we looked at data types such as int. So int age equals one. Uh, we did a bunch of different things. If you haven't seen that video, please go back, watch it, come back. Um, so this time we're looking at strings. So let's go ahead and declare a string or we might hear it called instantiating. Uh, so name equals quote Tokyo EdTech. So what I've done here is I have created a string. Now notice I called the class strings. Don't call it string because that'll cause problems. Um, but we can call it strings because it's different to this. We have our public static void main uh, method and of course our closing pieces. So I have just created a string, I've declared it or I've instantiated it, whatever you want to call it. And I can go ahead and print this. I can go system.out.println, say name, file that. Execute it, and you'll see here, go EdTech. Okay, pretty cool. Um, so I can go ahead and make a few more. So I can do string, say favorite movie. I'm say my Casablanca. I haven't seen it. I'll stop what I'm doing right now and go and watch it. And we can do something like uh, Wednesday in Japanese, for example. That is Sui Yobi. That, or if I be able to type in Japanese on this computer or not, but I did copy and paste it earlier, I could do that. So I can go ahead and combine these strings. I can go ahead and say string. Let's go ahead and concatenation. And concatenation is just a fancy term for combining. So I can say string, I'll say introduction. Uh, equals, I'll say hello. Plus name, plus quote, period, favorite is quote, plus three, quote, today, it's, actually it's Thursday, but don't tell anybody, and we'll go ahead and put, uh, web net, spell it, in Japanese. Plus book period semi. So let's go ahead and print that out. So system dot out dot print ln production. Well, let's see if I did that right. So far, so good. Let's run it. it says hello, I'm Tokyo EdTech. My favorite movie is Casablanca, and today is Suyobi. Uh, you know, so as I mentioned, is Thursday. I think it might be. Wednesday somewhere in the world. So I think it's still early. Anyway, so basically we can create strings and we can combine them using the plus operator and we can print them out as we've done with our other types. So one thing to take note of here, notice how string is capitalized. So if you remember with the int, it was lowercase and you notice how it kind of changed colors here in Genie. Now, depending on your editor, it might change colors. Um, so a one, for example. So it is capitalized. Because it's capitalized, this tells us that strings are 
objects. They are not the primitive types that we learned in the previous unit. They are objects. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through. Um, that's kind of an important concept. So with our string objects, we have something called methods. And these are things that I like to think of them as abilities or things that those objects can do. So if there are five here listed that we're going to go through. So let's go ahead and do uh, length. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new string and I'm going to call it uh, favorite song. Okay, and my favorite song is pictures of you is by the band The Cure. So if you haven't heard that, again, I would probably stop what you're doing go on YouTube and listen to that. Um, so the length method. The length method, unsurprisingly, returns, that's an important concept, is it returns the length of that string. And by length, I mean the number of letters. You know, spaces are considered letters, so the number of characters, that makes a little more sense to you. So if I, I could do this, now it's not going to do anything, but you'll see. Favorite song dot length. So I'm going to go ahead and compile that. I'm going to run it. And you can see how nothing happened here. We didn't get an error, which is a good thing. Uh, but we didn't actually see the value, the length of pictures of you. And that is why I was saying it returns the value. Uh, so we return the value, but it didn't go anywhere. So I could do something like this. I could do int length equals uh, favorite song dot length. I could do system dot out dot print ln. I could say favorite song plus quote has quote plus length. Let's quote space letters. I'll, I'll say characters, it's more accurate. Characters. So again, I'm doing a little string concatenation. Uh, I'm using an int, so I'm using a string. I'm gonna go ahead and compile that. Run it. Let's see, it says pictures of you has 15 characters. So let's see if that's accurate. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The space is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it accurate. Now, just as a side note, I didn't have to do this. I could have taken this and put it directly here. For that. Do it however you like. It's probably a good habit to get into and know how you can do both of them. So as I mentioned, it returns the length. So what happens in your head, you can think of, okay, when it gets to here, calculates the number of characters and this is transformed and might want to think of it that way that then becomes 15 and so then it prints out 15. Just did here okay so length is pretty straightforward there's there's not a lot i can tell you about that um, but this has actually come in very very handy uh, in future units so make sure you understand that length uh, is the number of characters. Now, substring is kind of an interesting one. Um, it kind of tells you what it is. Sub means like part or under, and string is, is a string, so we know what that is. So what we can do is substring lets us take a piece of that string. It lets us cut out pieces of the string. So I'm going to go ahead and try this. I'm going to say string a word, a word, favorite song dot substring zero comma, uh, let's, let's do zero comma, well, we'll do eight, let's see what happens here. And I can say system dot out dot print ln word. And let's see what we get here. Let's compile that. And it gives us pictures. So let me explain how we got pictures out of zero and eight. So earlier we said there are 15 characters, but we need to be able to refer to each of these characters individually. 
Now, this is the first case of where we're seeing what I would refer to as a collection. You can think of this as a collection of characters. We've got a P, we've got an I, we've got a C, we've got a T, we've got a U, we've got an R, etc., etc., etc. So a string is really just a combination, it's a set, an ordered set of characters. And remember, if you remember from the previous unit, we do have that car or char type, whatever they call it. Um, and that's what this is actually made of. So what we can do here is we can pull out, and that's the expression I usually use, is we can pull out parts of the string because we like, kind of slice it up. So this zero refers to this character. It's a little confusing. Human beings, we count from one. So you want to think this is one. But in the way the computer thinks, this is zero. We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight is the space. So it's a little unclear here. So let me go ahead and get rid of the spaces and show you something here. Compiled, run. Notice I still got pictures. I didn't get the O. Again, let me count through that for you. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So substring, it includes the 0. It does not include the 8, character 8. So it includes this, does not include. This is called inclusive, and this is called exclusive. So let's go put the spaces back in. So we can pull out different parts of the string. So I could also do something like this. I could do string song title push, that's another cure song. So if I wanted to print, P by itself, U by itself, S by itself, H by itself. I would do something like this. Uh, System.out.ln, say song title dot substring. And remember, this is zero. I want zero by itself. I want P by itself. So it's zero comma one because we don't include that letter. I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste. So 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, uh, sorry, 2, 3, and 4. Pilot. Yeah, I always recommend like when you do copying and pasting that you always test it because if you make a mistake, then you have to fix it a zillion times. So you can see here. We printed out from push, we out 0, 1. So that was 0 and 1, but the 1 is not included. And we printed out 1 and 2, 2 is not included. 3 and 4, 4 is not included. And uh, 0, 2, sorry, 0, 2 and 3, my bad. 0 and 1 is not included, 1 and 2 is not included, 2 and 3 is not included, 3 and there is no 4. Okay, so that's okay, we can go over. Now, right, just got to be careful. If your numbers are wrong, if you try 4 and 5, there is no 4. Because it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. There is none. If you compile it, you get an error. It compiles. You get all these weird things. You'll see string index out of bounds exception. So 4 and 5 is 4 is too big. There is no Or again, you'll be doing a lot of this uh, if you take my course. <laughs> it's really important uh, to be able to do that. Okay, so that is the substring method. Oh, just a quick thing. Um, actually, no, we, we did that. So 0 and 8. So, oh, I know we did. So the other thing is, notice how I have a starting index and a, an ending index like plus 1. I can also do the following. I could do system.out dot print ln say favorite song dot substring okay, now in this case I'm only going to put one number in so let's say I wanted to print u I can do 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 
Well, so y is at index 12. Now, I could put 12 and 15 because they're the length is 15. But if I do this, it will start here and it will go all the way to the end. So if there's 100 characters, 1,000 characters, doesn't matter. If there's only one number, it goes all the way to the end. Go ahead and compile that and run it. You'll see pictures and then we started at index 12. We went all the way. If I change that to 11, compile it, run it, you'll see there'd be a little extra space because the space is at 12. All righty, next up, index of. Index of is a very useful method. And what this does is it tells us the index of the matching. So for example, um, now we still have our favorite song up here, which is pictures of so what I can do is I can say uh, int index equals favorite song dot index of. I can also go ahead and do of. So what it does is it looks in the string and it looks for of. Now, in this case, does of exist? Yes, it does. So zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The index of O is nine. So it should return nine. System.out.println index is plus index plus quote period. Well, let's compile it and we'll see the index. Pretty cool. Now, let's go ahead and try and look for something that doesn't exist. Do Elise. If you're a fan, you know why I chose that. Let's compile it. Now, what do you think it's going to return? Now, we can see Elise is not in this song title. So, what does it return in that case? And you can see here, negative. So, just as a reminder, let's do pictures. And I can do single letters, doesn't matter, but I can do, I can do P. And the index of P, of course, is going to be zero. So if the index exists, if the substring exists, it's going to be from zero and higher. If it doesn't exist, it returns negative one. So that's how we can know, does this character exist in there? So let's say, for example, I could do something like this. I could say string vowels uh, equals uh, A E I O U and A -E I O U, because capitals in our case are different to the computer. And I could say system.out.println uh, vowels.index of, let's say A. And I can say system. system uh, uh, out that print ln vowels uh, index of we'll learn how to do this more of this later x so what is the index of a and what is the index of x so I missed a I do that all the time okay so you can see the index of a is five and then the index of x is an eight one zero two so using this method, we can tell whether or not something is a member or is a part of another group of something, another collection. Again, we'll be using that quite a lot in the future. So just, just something to note for future reference. All righty. Now, um, equals, a dot equals. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this Previously, but uh, let's say say int x equals five. I say int y equals five. Do system dot out dot print ln uh, x equals equals y. I'm going to compile that. I'm going to run it, and you'll see where it comes up with true. And this is we'll talk a lot more about this in the next unit, which is conditionals. Um, so 
what this tells us, what this checks, is x equal to y? And in this case, of course it is, because 5 is the same as 5. Let's try 10, see what happens here. Now it returns false. So again, remember, int is a primitive type. So with these primitive types, we're going to use equals equals. However, as I mentioned previously, strings are objects. So we're not going to use two equal signs. We're going to use the dot equals method. Now note, there are cases where we do use two equal signs, but their results are not what you'd expect. We'll learn more about that later. So let's go ahead and try this. So string, uh, let's say correct password. It's 11. Eight. That's not my real password, so don't try it. Uh, copy that. We'll say input password. And then to compare them. So I can go ahead and make a Boolean from last, the last unit. So is correct. Say is correct password not equals input password. So does THX1138 equal THX1138? And of course, I think the answer is correct, so it is the same. So system.out.println, uh, we'll say is correct. And actually, go ahead, let's put uh, the password. plus all right so let's go ahead and compile it run it and say is the password correct true so this is how we find out our two strings do two strings have the same value so let's say i entered the wrong password um to d2 Again, if you're a sci-fi fan, you'll know why I chose those names. Um, if you're not, Google it. I'm going to compile it. I'm going to run it. And you can say, is the password correct or false? And again, in the next unit, we'll learn how to change the output based on that. But if you're going to be comparing strings, we don't want to use... Um, so let's put this back to 11.38. Let's see if it works. I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, the rules in this one are a little bit weird. This word. This word. Try that. See what happens. Okay. In this case, it actually did work. Um, there are a, a lot of cases where it doesn't, so please do not. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. There we go. So that is how we check if two strings are equal to each other. So it is the equals method. Okay, and the last one, the last method I want to look at here is compare to. And this is really important when we're doing sorting and, and things like that. But what it lets us do is compare a string to another. What do we mean by compare? So let's say int, I'm going to call this distance, I don't know what else to call it, equals a dot compare to C. So think about this. Um, we know the alphabet looks like this. Uh, C, D, so on and so forth. So compared to C, what is A? So from C, start. this is our starting point, from C to A, how far away are they from each other? So minus one, minus two. If I do system dot system dot out dot print L N distance, run it, we get negative two. So a common beginner mistake would be to get those backwards, like you'd have positive two instead of negative two. So we reverse it. So compared to A, where is C? So from A, one, two, it's positive two. To the right is positive, left is negative, just like a number line. And we get 
too. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now we can also do, let's say we wanted to compare C to C. So what do you think the result's gonna be? So how far is C away from C? And if you guess zero, it's the same distance, same place, you guessed right. So it is a zero. And this is something we would use with sorting. So we can also do not just single letters, but we can do actual words. And this is where it actually comes in handy. So I can say string uh, singer one equals, we'll say Bob Mold. It's the lead singer of Husker Du. Sugar, singer, stinger, singer two, uh, Bob Dylan, who really needs production. So looking at these two, let's go ahead and calculate the distance. So we're going to put singer, singer one dot singer two, singer two. on a side note, notice I did not put int here. So if I compile this, this variable distance is already defined. You only declare the type one time. After that, just leave. Okay. So now let's look at this. So you can see here that B and B are the same. So you might think, okay, well, it's going to return zero, which would be wrong. Um, it's, not, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad guess. But what happens is when the letters are the same, it looks at the next letter. Same, next letter, same, next letter, same. Ah, M and D. So it's I, J, K. Okay, so it's going to compare the M and the D. So singer one is Bob Mold compared to Bob Dylan. So starting at D, what's the distance to M? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This should give us nine. Compile that, run it, give us a distance of nine, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and then just one last final thing here. Uh, let's take a look at this. Say uh, distance equals. What if we do um, do a dot compare to oops, a. copy that. What do you think is going to pilot? Now, a human being, you might think, well, a and a are the same thing. But as was probably mentioned previously, you know, every letter or every symbol has a number associated with it. So if I compile this, I already did that, or run it, you'll see that the answer is 32. So compared to A, this A is 32 in distance. So if you look up at what's called an ASCII table, you'll see that like A is like 65 and blah, 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 blah. And then small a is 97. Um, so 97 minus 65 is 30. So you have to remember that everything in the computer's memory is. So anyway, that is the basics of strings. That is the five methods that are uh, emphasized in the AP Computer Science, for those of you doing AP Computer Science. If you're not doing AP Computer Science, there are tons and tons and tons of Java string methods. And some of them are really helpful, well, a lot of them are really helpful. You can do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, for example, some simple ones are to lowercase, where you can convert uh, to lowercase, and convert to uppercase, and you know, there's like quite a lot of things that you do. Again, if you're an AP computer science student, you basically just need to know the five that I listed here. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's definitely worth playing around with those. Before we finish, I do want to come back to this last part here, which says concepts, objects, and collections. These are two really key concepts that you'll see in, uh, in Java, and especially in my course and in 
computer science. So what I mean by an object, or an object, object is something that has attributes and methods, attributes and abilities. Um, so in this case, a string. So a string has a value. So let's see here. Uh, well, we'll just use what we have. So we already have, uh, I'll say we'll do favorite band. So string, string, band, uh, here. So because, you notice this is capitalized, that tells us that this is an object. And we'll, we'll learn more about this later. And because it's an object, this object has methods. So this is called dot notation, where you'll see object dot math. On a side note, we also saw in the last unit uh, math dot sqrt. That is a class dot method. We'll learn more about it later. Um, but we have objects, and these objects have methods. Uh, we looked at five for the string uh, string object, and we can create our object. Now, strings are a special type of object. There is another way to create objects. So it's string favorite band equals new string. In this case, I would put the keeper. I can't do it twice, so I have to comment that out. So if I compile it, this is the standard method of creating an object. So it is the class variable equals new class, what are called arguments. So, and again, this is something that we'll come back to later when we learn more about objects. Um, but anyway, this tells us that strings are objects, and that they follow the same rules as the naming rules as our primitives. Again, so remember this phrase dot notation, so object dot method. So parentheses there, one, two. Uh, and then the other thing that I want to look at is collections. This is a super important concept uh, that you'll see over and over and over in the course. Um, so you can think of a string as a collection of characters. So so, it's, so you can say favorite band, it equals T plus H plus T plus space, etc., etc., um, and so on and so forth. It is a collection of these singular items. And what we'll be doing with this is later you'll learn different collections called arrays or array lists, you know, 2D arrays, and that. Um, so what we can do is we can do quite a lot of functions. We can go through and we can determine, for example, is this a capital letter or not? We can count the number of capital letters. Um, so what we do with a collection is uh, we take each thing individually and one at a time we look at each individual piece. Um, so Something that you'll see later, I'm not gonna go over here, but just understand that this is a, this can be thought of as a collection of characters. And we will be doing tons and tons and tons of work with collections. Uh, they're just one of those key. Okay. So objects and collections. Yeah, this stuff we will go over uh, quite a lot later. Um, and it's something to be aware of. All right. Going back to coding concepts, we learned what a string is. It is a text type. Oh, just on a quick side note. If you're coming from other computer languages, you're probably used to doing something like this, using single quotation marks. If you do this in Java, it will not work. Java requires double quotation marks for strings. If it's a single quotation type, it is a char or char type. Uh, that's a Java thing. So don't make that mistake. And um, we looked at, sorry, I was on the wrong screen there. So if you put single quotes here, single quotes there, you'll get a compilation error. So that's not so bad. 
Um, so if, yeah, if you're coming from another language, you might be able to do that, like Python, you can do that, but in Java, you cannot. Uh, and then there are five main string methods that are used in the API, length, substring, index of, equals, and compare to. Uh, and then also just a quick mention that strings are objects, and you can think of them as a collection of characters. Quite a lot. Anyway, thanks for watching and keep on coding.